What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another deck profile here on TCG University for the card game Universes. My name is Tam, and today I'm going to be showing you James's Runica deck that he played for this week's Retro Round 3 Campus Championship. What's retro? Great question. Jasco has decided that they want to do an online tournament that is the original Red Horizon set all the way forward to our current standard set with a small ban list in the description down below. Um, and we're going to be playing an online tournament and doing a, a bunch of really awesome, cool ideas and just open up this really fun format for the, the good people to play. So we here at TCG University wanted to educate the, the good people as much as we can with decks that they could possibly play or they could possibly be playing against and get as much information out there as possible. So from a, a <laughs> From all of us here, let's go ahead and jump into the profile. All right, so Runica. Um, if you haven't seen one of my deck profiles before, basically what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be telling you more about how the deck wants to work, how it wants to operate, as opposed to what the deck... Um as, as opposed to what the cards do themselves. So what does Runica do? Runica gets a lot of value off of playing a very specific card called Battle Fist, which we will we will get to. Um, and she has foundation control, staging area control by either assets or foundations by after you attach a Battle Fist, you commit her and put one on top of their deck and you get to pick, as well as she makes all of her attacks really big for each Battle Fist that she has. So she's a bit of a snowball character. And so the more Battle Fists that we can have uh, attached to her on her kill turn, the better it goes for us. So let's go ahead and... Uh, Normally, I start my profiles with a bunch of attacks. Um, I'm going to be starting off with the assets first, just because of how potent Battle Fist is. Battle Fist is the main combo piece that we have inside of the deck. Um, we can attach it to Runica um, because of its ability. And there's a, there's some confusion with what the attachment zone is. Don't worry about it. It just it just goes on Runica. Um, and then it readies up foundations that have not been readied. And so the more... Battle fists that I have, the bigger and stronger my attack strings can go, right? If I got four battle, battle fists attached to Runica, every time that I check a four with Runica, my attack gets plus four damage, which is basically another attack on top of itself. And then as I start to check my attacks and I start to commit my staging area, I'll just remove a battle fist from the game and then I'll ready my cards back up and then I can keep throwing attacks. And so the more battle fists that I have, the more prepared that I can be, the bigger and stronger my attack turns are. So the way to beat this character is you've got to kill her fast. Otherwise, she's going to amass this big robotic army and then just beat you to death. <laughs> Up next, the next asset that we're playing is we're playing one key in. It says that every attack in my deck gets stun one, and it's even playable while committed in case they've got something that uh, commits my cards. Um, just everything gets really, really big, uh, and I ruin my opponent's staging area. Up next, we've got one Hanya. Um, this is one of the best defensive cards in the entire game. It says response after an unblocked attack, either mine or yours, deals damage. Um, commit this card, and then all difficulties go up. All my opponent's difficulties go up, and their block modifiers go up. So basically, it says every time that I hit you, I'm going to hit you better, or if you hit me, to stop hitting me. And then it's got this really awesome static that says after I play a weapon card, any weapon card, already a backup. Which is, this is like one of the main combo pieces you have inside of the all order or void weapon decks that make you so potent is just this card all by itself and the last asset we're playing is one uh tenbatsu um this says enhance commit no more enhances can be played so basically i just flash your the attack you get to play one ability and then i'll commit it no more can be played your missile launcher gets to either get stats or it gets to stun or you can uh, EX are powerful, but you don't get to do all of it. And then it says response commit after you add an attack to your momentum, add the top card. So basically it says response commit. Um, instead of turning off enhances, I'm going to grab an extra momentum, which is super important for the uh, for the main attacks of the deck. And we're going to go ahead and just get to it right now. We've got four from Science with Love. Uh, we Every turn, we find an asset out of our deck. Like we just find a battle fist uh, be, due to our character's first form. And so this card just says we gain momentum equal to the number of assets that we have. And every turn we're going to get an asset. So like every turn, if I've got it from Science of Love, I'll just gain four momentum. Really, really strong stuff. And then if they happen to have any face downs, I get mo uh, multiple X. X equals the number of face downs. And then with Runica, it and all the multiples are going to get an extra bonus of uh, damage. But honestly, um, that's not the, the main combo the main combo that we want to do with this card is actually with new siang style meteor we have three proxies they're just in other decks um this card has powerful uh powerful four and it can destroy other assets in addition to paying its multi powerful so we play the from meteor and then i'll grab a bunch of momentum and then they have to deal with the, the from science it being high and then now that i've got this a bunch of medium and i've got three or four battle fists i will use the battle fists as uh destroy them for the powerful as well as the momentum that I gained from from science with love as the powerful and this thing hits for you know a million damage as long as they don't have a way to 
deal with this. This is a one turn. I saw this thing on turn two just get 24 damage out of nowhere. Really, really strong stuff. For consistency's sake, we're playing uh, double uh, Karamidama. Uh, this card is basically just a free five damage. Uh, if it's blocked, you draw a card for each of my assets. Every turn I'm grabbing an asset. It is really easy to block, though. So it's a two mid for four. Um, and if they're not afraid of you drawing cards, this is a very, very easy easy way to just get a card out of their hand up next we've got the bread and butter we've got four shadow slicer uh do you know it i mean it's an all weapon deck there's no reason not to play it not to mention rudik is making checks every single turns and so with four shadow slicer you or excuse me with four battle fists you can play your four shadow slicer and even on one foundation and you'll pretty much never never fail it um just pop your battle fist re-ready your re-ready your card uh this card is absolutely fantastic in every deck that it can be played in up next, we've got Double Ghostly F Funeral. Um, this card is another one of those really good combos from From Science with Love. I'll grab the momentum off the From Science and then play my Ghostly Funeral, and it hits like a truck. Um, I fo I forced them to block it because the Battle Fist is giving me a bunch of extra uh, a bunch of extra uh, power inside of it. Excuse me. Up next, a secondary kill condition we have is a uh, Force Face Splitter. It's super easy for us to play a ton of weapons into our card pool, especially with uh, the as the game goes later because of Battle Fist readying up a bunch of stuff. And it combos with the weapon, so the weapon has to be directly in front of the Face Splitter beforehand. Um, it gets speed and damage equal to each weapon inside of my card pool. It's possible for me to have eight cards in my card pool, depending on how much draw power I'm allowed to have inside of my turn and readying things back up at Battle Fist. Not to mention extra damage off of Runica with uh, the number of Battle Fists that we have. And then the last attack that we have is Double Curse Splat. This card says that I get to have one more Hail Mary pass at the very end of my chain. Imagine having three attacks in my card pool. I play the Curse Splat, and then at the very end, we play um, the From Science with Love and then give it multiple two. Well, I've just played three extra attacks for basically no cost, um, and all of them are getting absolutely massive because of Runica's ability. Um, this card's just a really good last-minute Hail Mary play. On to the actions of the deck. <coughs> We've got four superior techniques. Sorry about the proxies. They're, they are inside of other decks. Um, one of the powerhouse actions from the retro uh, format. Um, this is form, discard a weapon card from your card pool, colon, draw two cards, then discard this card. So as long as you can uh, check a five, you discard uh, one, two resources from your hand to just draw two fresh resources and keep your card pool very, very clear. This card is insane. Not to mention response after my opponent plays an ability on their character. Pick any card in my discard pile and add it up to my hand. It could be a block. It could be another superior technique if you want it to be. Um, in other decks, it could be something that uh, is more interactive, like Revoke or something. Just a really, really solid choice whenever we uh, we play the game. On our foundations, I want to talk about the aggressive foundations first. We've got four, the OG Mecha Ninja. Normally, this is in the flow category, but I put it into uh, aggressive just because of that extra check of, of four. Your high attack gets plus one speed. Your mid attack gets plus one damage. Um, yes, it does let me play bigger, longer streams strings of attacks flow wise um really good with things like face splitter but more importantly this card just is extra stats on on top of already runica's stats um in order to push through as much damage as we can we're playing double superior assailant uh, runica gives damage we want to give a little bit of extra speed up next we've got for swift and nimble um commit this attack gets plus one uh damage for each uh, number of weapon cards in my card pool that includes found weapon foundations which 90 percent of our foundations are <clears throat> the more weapon cards that we can have inside of our card pool and then hit a big long string and then we can push that final damage through i'll make uh swift and nimble can possibly close out the game i'm not up next consistency wise we've got four never a day without a training this card is literally just flip draw one card because of our first form existing and just saying we have a uh a asset in our staging area always um, this card just says if i have an asset draw a card hey i'm for sure always going to have an asset <laughs> up next flow wise we've got four stolen sword probably one of the strongest cards inside of this deck um it says reveal any weapon card that you want the next time you play a weapon foundation you just build it into your staging area face down i will note though this does not work with responses in the card pool. So things like OG Mecha Ninja, you're not allowed to respond in the card pool. It's out of the card pool before you get a chance to respond because of how Stolen Sword's ability works. And it also does not work on block. If I show you a Stolen Sword and then attempt to block your attack with a Stolen Sword, I've not technically played a 
a weapon foundation. I have played a weapon block. Um, the word over here changes. <clears throat> and so that means that I, I cannot attempt to, uh, I, I cannot move that card down. So make sure you're playing the, the games correctly. But this card's really, really good at extending your turn and giving you extra Battle Fist targets to ready back up. Up next, in a very similar vein, we've got four without a master. This card, while I have two assets out, which by turn two, I will for sure have two assets out. When it committing it, it counts as two foundations as opposed to one. So if I need a five and I check a three as opposed to tapping two resources, yeah, I just I just committed the one. It just uh, it doubles up. If I've got four foundations, I've actually got eight foundations. It's basically just playing as Goro. <laughs> Up next, we've got Double Weapon Master. Uh, this card is a little counterintuitive to the strategy, but sometimes it matters. Response, after my weapon attack deals damage, discard one card from my card pool. It could be a weapon card, it could be a non-weapon card. Maybe they've added cards into my card pool. As long as I deal damage, um, I just get to clear one thing out. Up next... <clears throat> defensively or disruptively i've got uh four perfect accuracy if my opponent has a way to stop me from drawing cards if they've got a, a venomous or a caught red-handed or something along those lines uh this is just flip i get to see one of their cards it is a loyal friend as a weapon card with a block just fan fantastic definitely needed inside of uh, this kind of this style of deck up next we've got double coiling contempt this card is just mainly in here primarily to be a weapon foundation to build down on a kill turn, or it is a three mid block with Breaker 2, one of the only defensive pieces that we have in the deck. And then the last card that we're playing is we're playing one Warrior of, the, of a Lost Clan. It's Once again, it's a weapon foundation. It checks a six, and it flips, and I get to destroy one of their foundations. Sealing a card is all fine and dandy, but destroying a card is even better. And so there you have it, James's Runica deck that he played for Retro Round 3. If you like the deck, make sure you let him know down in the comments down below. Make sure you check out all the matches and the other profiles that we have out here on the channel for the Retro uh, format. If you want to catch the matches live, please go out to twitch.tv slash tcguniversity. Follow out there, get the push notifications whenever we go live every Tuesday. And join us in chat, we'd love to hang out with you. Um, we've, got a, we've got quite the following happening now. And then lastly, if you want to tell me about your really cool Runica, Runica deck, I would love to communicate with you. If you just go out to patreon.com slash TC University, sub out there at at least the $1 level, get access to our Discord, um, talk with us, talk with me, talk with any of the student body or the faculty about the really awesome Runica deck that you're brewing up. So, from all of us here at TCGU, thank you very much for watching and stay informed.